Everything's different, nothing has changed. This is the Great Mosque on the corner of Fournier Street and Brick Lane in the parish of Spitalfields, Whitechapel, London E1. It's lunchtime. The service in the mosque is over at 10 to 2. Plenty of time to hurry back to the little garment factories of Whitechapel to make shells for coats and suits and jackets that sell to the middleman at two pounds a throw. Across the Whitechapel Road in Fieldgate Street, they pray in a prefab. On Ramadan, when there's a full house, they pray in the street. The Muslim community of Tower Hamlets isn't rich. 20,000 Bengalis, almost one-seventh of the population of the borough. Four men to every woman, employed for the most part in tailoring and cooking and small retail. When they bought the Fournier Street Mosque five years ago, they pulled out the pews. They've kept the gallery though, at any rate for the time being. The Huguenots built these streets. They gave Spitalfields its second grandest church. They gave it street names. And they gave it the rag trade. The Hugh, so it goes. The first generation clings to religion and tradition to win respect from the host community. The second generation, brought up in the host culture, suspicious of it, educate themselves to fight their way into it. The migrant community struggled to set up its own schools, reinforcing the culture of exile with the values of the homeland. We set up this school, Eastern Community School, about two years, two months back. We have seen that the state-run schools in this country never teaches the language of our people, the religion of our people, the culture and tradition of our people, the history of our people. It is the law of the country that our children have to remain in these schools up to the age of 15 or 16. So parents are bound to send them to these schools, but virtually they do not learn there the things they need to face the realities of life. For the 16-year-old immigrant, this is reality. An upstairs room in Fashion Street or the Whitechapel Road. It always was reality. A survey in 1901 shows 25,500 Jews employed in tailoring. Over 40% of the workforce. So here you have Zangwillian Whitechapel. A hundred years later, exactly as it was, the whirring of machinery going on day and night. A different immigrant this time. The Bengalis. Look at these benches. Now, almost every garment factory in Whitechapel is under Bengali management. Amar, amar jana na ije khushe khotori bese, khotwa, khotori dani. In ta amar onay shawai kamra onay khompa shay khaz kori. Amra onay khlomba kanda khaz kori. Good living coral like Gary, in Tom Rafarina, on a strong home for a has been sure to enough for Sona, Sasha Tahazori, Site Gondas of Tugonda was on the Rahazori, Hazori, Amra on a home for Savai. 
The tradition hardly changed from the little villages, the shtetls of Galicia, to the back streets of Spitalfields. The host community won't employ them, so they turn inwards to the extended family. Brothers, sons, cousins, nephews, in-laws, all the clichés are true. Why chapel, my why chapel? The GLC has encouraged Bengalis to move away from Spitalfields. They say there's no suitable housing here. And to prove it, the council allocates to the Bengalis, who make up almost half the Spitalfields population, one council house in 16. This is the house. Some houses behind me. Council built those houses uh, 19, 1974. It is newly built, but you will not see any single family, Bengali family there. You will not see any single, but there will be three, four hundred floods. So what sort of discrimination? It is a discrimination in this housing problem. Council will move few people, slum to slum, slum building to slum. But tenements offer protection that tower blocks don't. At the bottom end of Brick Lane is a railway bridge, and beyond the bridge is hostile territory. This is where the National Front meet, where Mosley's fascists used to gather. This side of the bridge, the immigrants protect themselves by recreating village life. The links with the villages of Salette are strong here. They're in the food they eat and the films they see. In the records they buy. Social life is the traditional social life of Bangladesh. Men mixing with men and women with women. You don't see much of the women in Brick Lane. Just a brief glimpse at quarter to four when they pick up their kids from school. I think the reason is, is the way in which Asian culture has always been, where uh, the woman, in fact, not just to the host community, but led quite a segregated life. Um, when you compared her life with um, a man, for instance, and uh, it was more or less accepted that her place was at home and uh, should be tending to the children and. Uh, to the home life. I think there's a difference when she does come here because more often that some of them at least are forced to do work that host women do and here it's more an economic reason rather than uh, wanting to work. You rarely see a woman in the cafes. Saturday afternoon in Brick Lane is like a village in East Bengal. And when a group comes together to practice, it's the same closed community of East India they conjure up. Food cemented the Bengali society too. In one sense, food was the midwife to London's Asian community. Those first arrivals at Tower Hill were many of them cooks and ship's storemen. They're here to earn money to send to the villages of Salat. Only when they're prosperous enough will the whole family come over. It's not the best base from which to fight racism. And as the tide of prejudice draws back beyond the Brick Lane Bridge, it uncovers the real problem. There are some old Jewish people here who belittle the problems of the Bengalis, after all, there's a welfare state now, and trades unions. 
not like the 30s. 